We have Bree here, and Bree is the first person I ever talked to to volunteer, uh, and the first person to give me a chance to volunteer. So, Bree, what would your recommendation be to go to a shelter and volunteer? How do you do that? So, most volunteer opportunities are listed online. Usually, um, they most rescues have like a website or they have an email address associated. Normally, if you just reach out to that email or you fill out their volunteer application on the website, mm -hmm. usually someone will be in contact with you. So with with the people on my platform who want to volunteer, it's a little different because they want to either go play with a dog or they want to walk a dog or they want to run a dog. Mm -hmm. And a lot of shelters, from what I see in my comments and DMs, won't allow them to do that. Now, from my experience, I feel all the people saying that are people that call or submit an application. Mm -hmm. And I think the best way to do it, in my opinion, is just go in person and just say, you know, present yourself in person, say what you want and what you want to do. Um, and that's what I did here, but I don't know if... Usually for bigger organizations, if they have a volunteer coordinator, yeah. then that's probably the person you want to ask to speak to. Okay. Sometimes they don't have programs like that because those programs just don't exist yet. This one didn't either. Exactly. So it's a little different though because I was here for a while before I ever ran with a shelter dog. Yeah, there, so. but um, there are organizations that um, if they have someone willing to create the program, yeah. then usually they're willing to put the program off. So there are other rescues that are, I'm hearing a little bit about where they're making programs available where people can come, pick up a dog on their yep. lunch break, take them for a walk, take them back. But usually there's some sort of a video or packet that they hand out that mm -hmm. says like these are the approved routes that you can go these are the rules that you have to follow and then how do you go about changing those rules do you think um because because the bigger picture is like hey i went to a shelter and i volunteered to run them mm -hmm. and they completely shot me down right so it's like how do you obviously there's a lot of good in that there's it's like you know people aren't going hey i want to take record videos around your whole your whole your whole shelter and yeah. post them online. They're just like, I just want to come and make a difference, but they're telling people no. So like, how would you go about trying to change that, I guess? So I think sometimes with most rescues, they're looking at the safety of the animals, yeah. right? So if it's a brand new person who's just showing up to the rescue and they haven't, like, they haven't met that person yet, they don't know anything about that person, yep. sometimes there's a little bit of a safety concern when it comes 100%. to our animals. That's the liability of the person who owns the rescue or the director that runs the rescue, right? Yeah. Especially if it's a state facility because they have a lot more strict rules. Yeah. Whereas like we're privatized rescue. Yeah. Our board of directors makes their rules and that board can meet whenever they want to to change those rules. Yeah. Um, it doesn't work that way for a lot of county shelters. Yep. A lot of that stuff has to go through county commissioners and things like that. If you have a county shelter that you would like to set up a program like that, mm -hmm. or you think that it's something that you're passionate about doing, then contact your local county commissioner's office, contact your local council officers, contact um, people who sit on the county board. Mm -hmm. um, those programs are things that can be created, but someone has to put in the effort to create that, okay. right? You came to me with a plan. Yes. You showed up at our rescue, you came with us with a plan on what you wanted to do for the rescue. It was something that no one had ever presented us with before. Yeah. So we met with the people who needed to be brought in, mm -hmm. they discussed it, and we came up with a plan together on how we could facilitate that. Yep. Sometimes there has to be a person who starts something yep. in order for other people to pick up that torch and keep going with it. Yes. And so, especially for county shelters, they might not have ever had a program like that. Mm -hmm. So look into other states that have programs like that. Reach out to those rescues. You mm -hmm. can do that online. You can contact their email. Say, hey, how did you get this program started? I would like to give this information to our local county shelter to see if this is something we can do here. Okay. All of that kind of stuff is stuff that um, you can definitely sponsor change without just 
Um, sometimes people just don't know how to create a program because they've never done anything like that before. Yeah, exactly. So if you do the effort and you're really passionate about it and you want that to be an option for people in your area, it usually just takes one person yeah. to reach out to a rescue who does that program already to see like, hey, I would like to do this in my area. How did someone convince you guys that this was a good idea? Mm-hmm. Right, and then usually you can facilitate that here. We would love to be able to do that more here. Yeah, um, We're definitely more open to that here, but we also have a large property where people can come and walk the dogs first. Exactly. And then once people feel more comfortable with the animals, then they can take them on day trips. They can do stuff like that. So yeah. sometimes you just need to start out volunteering at the facility walking the animals around the facility, spending time with the animals. Once the staff gets familiar with you, then day trips might be an option yep. to take them out on a run, to take them to the beach, to take them to a park or something like that. Some places even have like dog friendly splash pads or yep. things like that. Mm-hmm. But a lot of that is issues where um, you can't just show up to a brand new facility. Well, it's difficult to show up to a brand new facility where you've never met the animals before and you know because yep. you've come out there's some of our dogs that we have currently that would thrive in those environments and there's yep. some of them that wouldn't do so well exactly and if you're a brand new person who's never interacted with those animals before then you don't know which of those animals are the perfect ones to take out you also don't know anything about their behavior yep. and how well they would do in those environments yep. so sometimes you need to Sometimes you need to win over the people who run the rescue or their volunteer team or things like that in order to convince them to do something new that they've never decided to do before. Yep. Yeah, 100%. And the biggest part is about being honest. So for me, you know, I have what, like 400 plus thousand followers and how I approach a shelter and multiple shelters around here have all said no until adoption first said yes um, is because I I approached it that way because a long time ago I went to a shelter and I volunteered and they told me I could volunteer with the puppies. And when I walked in, all the puppies were gone and I ended up just cleaning poop for like two Mm -hmm. hours. And I was like, oh my gosh, I thought I was gonna play with puppies. But that's that's the truth about volunteer work is is you're going and you're you're volunteering your time to do what the shelter needs you to do. Um, For me, I knew where my worth was. Um, So that's just how I, I, I asked them, hey, if I take videos, if I help get dogs adopted, I think that's where I would be best suit to help the, the mm-hmm. adoption center, right? So um, luckily I had that in my back pocket, um, even though it was new, um, with someone without you know a, a huge following, it's a little harder to just show up to a, a shelter and say, hey, this is what I wanna do, right? You kinda wanna start out with maybe cleaning up some poop, maybe um, you know, doing X, Y, and Z, feeding the dogs, giving them water. And then once again, you went over that shelter staff, then you can kind of go and you can kind of bring up any ideas that you have to help. So cool. Yeah. I mean, all of our volunteers here, we want them to come out because they're volunteering their spare time. Exactly. So we want them to do things that they enjoy doing, but at the same time, it's also so helpful when you do those other tasks. 100%. Right? I started out volunteering here, yep. and that was six years ago. Mm-hmm. And I used to foster dogs, and we would do vaccines on one night out of the week. Yep. And so I would come up, bring my puppy up for their vaccine, mm-hmm. and then I would fold laundry while I was there. Yep. And then it wasn't long before I was helping out at the front desk, yep. and then I was doing adoption events with them, mm-hmm. and then and all of a sudden then I'm like more involved in different things and then now I mean I work here yep. and I process applications mm-hmm. and I process a lot of the volunteer orientations and things like that yeah. that stuff is all things that I have gotten to do because of the fact that they know me they know that I follow the procedures of the rescue exactly. I think that's the biggest thing is that the rescues want to know that they can trust you yep. with the animals that they have because they are entrusted with the care of these animals. 100%. Right? Yep. So a lot of times, I mean, the amount of people who just show up on your doorstep, if someone just showed up on your doorstep and was like, hey. I'd love to come and wanna, with you inside. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like people are so weary these days 100%. about new people. And so 
Um, I think people just want to know that you have pure intentions yep. and that um, that you are going to look out for the best interest of the animals. Yep. And so if you show up at the rescue and you put a few hours in volunteering, doing some things that, uh, we're not saying that you do things that you don't enjoy, yep. but just so that people can kind of get to know your personality a little mm -hmm. bit, know that you can be safe around the animals, knowing that like, you can appropriately handle an animal yes. is so important is. because um, you know yeah. if a dog gets loose from you and you try to grab them or try to chase them or things like that so then exactly the dog anything. could get hit by a car yeah. could anything could happen yeah. Yeah. and so um, I think that's what a lot of the I think that might be a concern for some of the rescues is yeah. that this brand new person that they've never met yeah. takes the dog out for a run and then that dog doesn't come back. And 100%. That's, that's so That's where all these people so in my comments are like, why aren't you using a harness, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, guys, when you're dealing with a dog you don't know. Yeah. One, putting a harness on a dog inside of a cage, the a random person walking in your cage, mm -hmm. trying to manipulate you, shoving a harness on you. Yeah. Like you're putting that shelter dog, it's gonna, it could bite you. Yeah. And then boom, it has a bite history, mm -hmm. and now it gets put down and never gets adopted. Um, two, you're out on a run and it slips out. The dog doesn't know you. Yeah. It's not, trust me, it's, it's gonna have a heyday. It's not yeah. coming back to you. Yeah, it's so, a big reason why, it, it, like, all of our cats here, they have to leave in a carrier. Yep. Because if that cat's gone... <laughs> it's gone. You're never getting it. Yeah, so that, that kind so, of stuff just comes with experience. It's yeah. easy to comment, like, that dog should be in a harness. Of course. But I know, I understand, but maybe you should go to your shelter and volunteer. But sometimes, too, that person's speaking from their experience. 100%. That's right? all it so is. So their yeah. experience was that their dog did better in a harness. Yes. Right? My dog does better in a harness. Yep. Right? So, like, I've had my dog for 10 years. Yeah. She is off leash trained. Mm -hmm. I've trained her immaculately. Yeah. She does everything that I would ask for her to do. Mm -hmm. She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But not everybody's dog is that way, especially 100%. not shelter dogs. Yes. And I still wouldn't trust my dog off leash in a new area. No. Right? And so it just is one of those things where, like, everyone who makes those comments, they're coming yeah. from their perspective. 100%. And all they know is their perspective. Yeah. But people who, like, work in animal welfare, how I'm going to treat an animal that I've just um, experienced with one time exactly. versus an animal that I've like spent a lot more time with, it's yep. going to be very different. Yeah. And the more time you spend with different types of animals, different breeds, different ages, mm -hmm. and just different personalities, 100%. um, you learn more about animal behavior yes. and things like that. And you are better informed the next time you come in contact yeah. with that animal. And, and the cool thing is if, when you guys go to your shelters, mm -hmm. uh, you can walk into your shelter and if they do allow you to run a shelter dog, whatever, uh, walk one, uh, play with one in the backyard, you can literally ask them what is the most friendly, dog friendly, human friendly, treat motivated, play motivated dog, and they will have that for you, mm -hmm. right? They will know their dogs. Yeah. So to keep yourself safe, if you're not comfortable handling a more fearful whatever mm -hmm. dog, you can literally ask for a specific dog and the shelter will have them. So. Yeah. And sometimes they're already in a foster home. But you can always go in on a Saturday and Sunday when yep. they're doing their adoption events. Like mm -hmm. we have a lot of our foster dogs come up on Saturday and Sunday that they get lots of exposure to new people because of the fact that they've been in their foster home from Monday through Friday. Yep. And they come up on Saturday for the adoption event and then they get exposure to new people, mm -hmm. right? But we know tons about that dog because they've been in a foster home. Yep. But um, And so we can relay that information to volunteers when they come in up, uh, up on a Saturday or Sunday when those dogs are here for adoption events. Cool. Yeah. Any last advice? <laughs> get out and get involved. Get involved. I yeah. Mean, uh, volunteering will give you more in life than it requires of your time. 100%. Oh, 100%. 100%. And you don't have to do everything no. to be of service. Yep. Like, I started out folding laundry. Yep. And so that's how much time I had in the day was I would show up, I'd do a load of laundry, and then I'd leave and I'd go home. Easy. And uh, some places, even if you're not able to, like, get out of the house, there are some places that just need people to put clips together or, like, show up and take photos yep. or... Um, some places might even need like a remote person to help reach out to volunteers mm -hmm. or places that run vet references and things like that. That's some of the stuff you can do from home. Yep. And so there's a myriad of things that you can do to assist other rescues. 100%. And just help save lives. Help save lives. Let's go <laughs> for the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> All right.